Hello, this is Mia Wood, Associate Professor of Philosophy in the Philosophy and Sociology Department at Pierce College. Today we're going to talk about structuring a proof using disjunction elimination. In other words, we're going to talk about when and how you can or should use disjunction elimination as a strategy in a derivation. We'll also talk about how you can use disjunction elimination as a tactic within another sub, um, excuse me, within another structuring subproof. So let's see how this works. Okay, first off, we're going to start a subproof immediately after the second premise. In this way, we are structuring our derivation by way of what will be disjunction elimination. Notice the disjunction is the main connective at line number one, and a common strategy is the following. When you see disjunction in your premises, set up disjunction elimination as your structuring subproof. So the way that we're going to do this is first take the left side of the disjunction, in this case not R, and then at some point we are going to derive the conclusion, which is not R. Then we get out of the subproof and immediately begin the next subproof, assuming now the right side of the disjunction, that is negate, or sorry, that is N and not S, and at some point we will get our conclusion, which is not R, and then get out of the subproof so that we can say in either case, that is assuming we have R, I'm sorry, assuming we have not R, we can infer not R, and assuming we have N conjunction negation S, we can infer not R. So in either case, we have not R. So once we've structured our subproof this way, uh, the rest is simply a matter of filling things out. So uh, notice that when we have not R, we simply reiterate not R. And the rule that we use is reiteration from line three. We're now done with the subproof that began at line three. And we can move on to the subproof that begins at line five. From the sentence, N conjunction negation S, we want the sentence not R. Well, notice that there is nothing uh, in the sentence N conjunction not S that overtly gets us not R, but we do have uh, two potential uh, or implicit contradictions. Let, take a look at line two. Line two is the sentence S conjunction negation N and look at line five. It's the sentence N conjunction negation S. So there are two implicit contradictions. We just need to make one of them explicit so that we can make the inference from contradiction elimination to our conclusion. So I've chosen to uh, pull down N from line five then I'll pull down negation N from line two, both conjunction elimination inferences. Then at line eight, we get the contradiction from lines six and seven. The rule is contradiction introduction. And then from line eight, we get line nine by way of contradiction elimination. Now we're in a position to complete the proof, which is to say we're in a position to justify the conclusion by way of disjunction elimination from lines 1, 3 to 4, and 5 to 9. And as you can see, it checks out. Okay, now let's take a look at another argument. Uh, you'll see on the left an ordinary language argument. On the right, we are going to translate. Specifically, we're going to translate into symbolic logic notation. It's not a bad idea to remember that uh, all the arguments we're working uh, with in symbolic logic are arguments um, that do appear in our natural language. So um, as we're translating, we see that in the first premise, the main connective is a disjunction. 
And um, we'll also notice that the conclusion is um, the atomic or simple sentence P. Rather than structuring our proof around disjunction elimination, however, we are going to use negation introduction. And then we will use disjunction elimination within that subproof. It's what's known as a nested subproof. And the idea here is to demonstrate that um, you will, 99 times out of 100, use disjunction elimination when you have a disjunction in your premises, uh, but you don't always have to use disjunction elimination as your structuring subproof. So let's see how negation introduction works here, and more specifically for the purpose of this tutorial, how disjunction elimination works. So first, we assume that our conclusion is false. We want to generate from that assumption a contradiction so that we can get out of the subproof and conclude that the assumption, um, in this case not P, is false, which is to say we introduce another negation. All right, so once you've made this assumption at line four, you will start uh, your subproof. You will um, indent a sequence and what you will assume is um, the sentence P conjunction Q. From that uh, sentence, you will derive a contradiction. Then you will assume in the successive subproof, that is after you derive the contradiction, you get out, start a new subproof. And when you start the new subproof, you will assume R conjunction S. You will derive a contradiction from that assumption so that you can get out of that subproof sequence and conclude that in either case, whether you have P and Q or R and S, you have a contradiction. So once you've got the framework laid out, um, your work is a matter now of just filling in the blanks. So notice that at line five, you have an implicit contradiction with line three. So what you want to do is pull down uh, P from line four. And then assert the contradiction at line six. Now you're ready to move on to the second subproof. Here again, uh, line seven has an implicit contradiction with line two. So you can um, infer R from R conjunction S, and then you can infer negation R from Q conjunction negation R. Do you generate that contradiction? You will assert it. All right, so we got out of the subproof at line uh, 10, or we got out at 11 from line 10, and uh, we're going to justify line 11 by uh, disjunction elimination, that is by lines one, four to six, and then seven to 10. And notice uh, that line 11 says we've inferred a contradiction. Uh, we've inferred that contradiction in the following way, uh, regardless of whether we have P conjunction Q or we have R conjunction S, we have a contradiction. Therefore, in either case, we have a contradiction. Now, line 12 is the result of the sequence, the subproof sequence that started at line 3, lines 3 through 11. Notice that the assumption that our conclusion was false yielded a contradiction. And we get out of that subproof by introducing a negation. And then line 13 is the elimination of the two negations at line 12. So um, if you were to do this uh, proof uh, by way of disjunction elimination rather than uh, negation intro with the disjunction elimination as the tactic within the larger subproof sequence, you would complete the proof in fewer lines. I hope this tutorial has been helpful.